the Northeast, Burlington, Vermont, where Canada meets the U.S. Year after year, a group of friends hit the ice and fish pike. Catch up, tell tales, and enjoy the great outdoors. This isn't your average fishing trip. The ice adds an element of danger, requiring each fisherman to be at the top of his game. The cold, the competition, and the elusive catch can frustrate even the calmest of fishermen. Together they take the test, but among them there can only be one winner. So come to the border and join us. This is ice fishing. Hardcore. In the small town of Swanton, population 6,000, the fishermen have found a prosperous fishing grounds. In 2013, human artifacts dating back 7,000 years were found near the Missiskoi River. Among them, a sharpened Neville-type stone that could have been attached to a spear, suggesting the area has long been used for ice fishing. Partially situated across the Canada-United States border lies Lake Champlain. At 125 miles long, 14 miles wide, and with an average depth of 64 feet, to say the lake is a force of nature is an understatement. With winter temperatures dropping to 30 below zero, February in Vermont is not a place for the faint at heart. Up in the North Country, weather changes fast. A bright day can turn dark in the blink of an eye. We find ourselves a mile out on the ice at the fishing grounds. It's early morning and the men are arriving in groups. Some yesterday, with more to arrive today. Kurt makes an assessment of location and the whereabouts of fish. There's a big hump out there, probably about 300 yards wide, that's an even level 10 feet. That's what we caught all our fish yesterday. Coming this way, it's coming up. And we thought usually the pike are shallow. I think they're still deep, so we're gonna head back that way and set some traps today. That's where I wanna be. Because when they come in, you know, it's a, it's a nice deep pocket for the fish to come in. And then when they start coming up into the shallows and the baits and, and the weed and on that, on that ledge, that's what, I'm, uh, that's what I'm hoping for. A mile down the ice, we meet up with Roger, who seems to be having some early luck. Every time you drop a hook with bait in the water, you've increased your odds to catch that monster fish that you've been looking for. Despite his late arrival to the ice, his preparation has brought him one flag closer to his monster fish and a chance at winning the trophy. That anticipation, that 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 feel of uh, I know there's a big one out there. Uh, it's the it's elusive, but achievable. And when you lock into them, there is absolutely nothing like it. Come to the light, go to the light, baby. Talking about. Idea, yeah. oh. There you go. That's what it's all about, baby. Yeah, baby. Let's weigh it up. Nine eleven. How can you not love that? I've been going on this trip for eight years with my winter brothers, I call them, up in uh, Lake Champlain, specifically Missisquoi uh, Bay in Vermont. A lot of preparation going into this. Um, you know, I have to tell you, I learned how to dress going to the Canadian border and fishing up there and what to wear and uh, even just prepping my tackle. It's critical to uh, get the big pike that we're looking for. 
The first thing I do is start with the clothing, right? And making sure that I have everything from the base layer all the way through the second and third layers. Um, and then obviously top layer is critical in terms of wind and weather. The Arctic Armour suit, although it's not a, a, a life suit, uh, it is buoyant and it floats and that's why I, my wife bought it for me for Christmas. I just had to take the 90 pounds of lead out of the pockets before I left. but. Uh, that's that's a different story. But then I start prepping all of my rods and reels. So what I do is I start making leaders for the pike. You know, anywhere from 20 to 24 inch wire leaders. I actually uh, order my leaders online from a craft store, and I make them by hand with the crimping tools um, and uh, size six or seven uh, octopus hooks for a pike. So it's really really cool, and uh, I actually put some beads and blades on some of my hooks just to add some action for the pike. One of the biggest things you need to do is take care of your hands at night. So a lot of the guys bring something called bag balm and you'll put that on your hands. Otherwise, even after two, three days of a very cold, wet environment, you'll have really large cracks on your hands. It's funny, a lot of people will say to me, so Porter, you know, this is going to be a real relaxing vacation, isn't it? But it's, it's work. You're working outside for 12, 14 hours, and then even when you're off the ice, uh, it's nice to take some time with the guys and have dinner and cook and have a little banter. But, uh, you know, as you prepare for bed, you're really defrosting a lot of your gear, checking your leaders, and uh, getting ready for tomorrow. Well, here's the thing. I mean, you know, you gotta, you gotta also remember, you know, we're fishing sub-zero temperatures. Okay, so those holes are freezing up uh, pretty quickly. You need to keep your holes clear at all times, right? Um, by law, you have to tend your tilts. You got, you got a hook and bait in the water. You have to be tending those tilts. So it's a constant uh, loop that you're doing. Um, you're checking your bait. You know, oftentimes. You may be fishing without bait, um, uh, or you know we fish dead bait. So you want to go down, you know, take them. You want to check them off and check presentation, make sure it's sitting properly in the water. Um, all of those things, clearing out your holes, um, you know, making sure the gear gear is all good. It's uh, it's not just going out, setting a hook and bait in the water, and just sitting back, relaxing, and having a beer. It's nothing, it's very, very active fishing. I filmed this because I wanted the audience to see what, what hard-working ice fishermen are really all about. So I put a crew together and we went out and filmed these guys out in the ice. They're like a mile out in, in, in Trailer City. And for six straight days, all they're doing is they're working. They're cutting holes. They're cleaning the holes, they're pulling the fish in. Oh, it's a beautiful fish back in the hole. They don't even keep their fish. And uh, it's like nonstop for six days straight, work, work, work. And it was a very enlightening experience. I mean, I didn't know too many guys that go out and work like that for recreation. I mean, for me, recreation, I go out and I drop a couple holes, uh, put some traps in, and I relax. I don't work very hard. I mean, for me, ice fishing is supposed to be a relaxing experience. For these guys, it's non-stop work. Yeah, it, it's, you're always busy, always something going on. You're, you're tending your holes, you're cooking food, you're shoveling snow, you're driving around watching other people catch fish, it's always something going on, no downtime, and, and I think that's what makes it fun, you never get bored, there's always something new happening. Well, you know, there's a lot of work, um, you know, you're fishing 15 tilts, so I mean, that's 15, um, you know, holes you have to drill, and you know, we're not dealing with six inches of ice here, we were dealing with feet. And also for the first time this year, we really dealt with extreme cold temperatures. So um, all your equipment was only in the water for not even an hour and it was needing to be chipped out um, inches of ice. Any temperatures above 20, 25, that's pretty good. But we haven't had temperatures over 10 degrees in three days. It doesn't take long to get two or three inches of extra ice in here. It was minus 10 this morning. 
It's up to minus two now. It was actually dangerous last night to be outside. If you wander outside, you fall down and hit your head or something, uh, you know, you're not going to last long. You're going to be a block of ice in no time. There's a reason we call it hardcore ice fishing. It gets really, really cold, and you have to be careful. You have to be prepared. You, you know, uh, you're talking about frostbite situations uh, uh, if you're not careful and you're not covered properly. Uh, just the cold weather and how quick all our gear was freezing in this year was just, just a burden on the whole trip. And no matter what you plan, Mother Nature always has a different idea. This year uh, was, we've been doing this for 10, 12, 15 years now, and this was the, the hardest winter. You know, you're riding in your vehicle and stuff because you can drive on the ice, but when you get out and you actually have to handle fish and wet your hands, your hands freeze up instantly, you know, and it's just, it's, they start to hurt, you know and you gotta get them back into the glove, but you gotta dry them first and then get them in. So it takes time to get them back into your glove. And um, by then, it feels like frostbite's already setting in, you know, but it's, it's, it's cold. Yeah, especially uh, when the temperatures get down around 20 below. I mean, uh, if you don't tend your traps, you're in trouble. You're gonna be chipping and chipping. You're gonna damage equipment. Um, you know, the, the traps that we use are, are pretty expensive, so. You don't want to do a lot of chipping, so you spend a lot of time tending your traps uh, in the real cold weather, which we usually get when we're up there. Time to go to work. What are you filling it up for me, bud? There's a lot that goes into it. It's a pretty time-consuming thing, but once you get out there, it's all worth it if you're all ready and ready to just have a good time. Well, we're gonna drill 30 to start out with, 15 each. And then um, we'll probably do some jigging, some moving around. So we could possibly drill 100 holes here in the next few days. Due to heavy snowfall, the camp and its many roads first need to be exposed by plow. Once camp is established, the men then go about choosing where they want to fish. They will each drill a line of 15 holes, which they can then maintain by four-wheeler or truck. Each hole is set up with an ice fishing trap called the tip-up. Vermont state law limits a maximum of 15 traps per person, and with each man fishing his maximum, the anglers really have their work cut out for them. The way that the men have all chosen to go about their fishing is by no means a way to set a lazy day. As repetitive as it may seem, the excitement of a fish waiting on the next flag keeps the fishermen in motion. No one's fishing experience ever turns out the same. Where one fisherman may be catching a lot of fish, others struggle to get a bite. I think I just got my bait. Yep. So thanks. They're just taking it and running with it and dropping it.
for me, the big one is an element of surprise. And many times, you don't know what you have until he gets into the open. And once he starts stripping that line through your hands, that's when you know you've got something serious on there. Small little guy, quick release we're gonna do here. Get him back in the water. I'm actually gonna get my bait back. I hope I get my bait back. Come on. Watch out for their teeth. That's for sure. Got it back. Quick release on this little guy, beautiful pike. Always watch out for those teeth. Beautiful colors here. Small little guy, eventually be a breeder. Come on. That's what happens, get him back in. Beautiful, very nice. And there we go. On to bigger ones. Very recently, I was on a TV show, and uh, there were a lot of negative comments about the show and me on the internet. And a lot of the comments came from a particular ice fishing organization, and I just happened to know a couple guys that were in it. Look at it with a bag of your sides. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, two traps. Look at rookie extraordinaire right here. Look at this. Talk about being prepared. Got his Ziploc bag. That's all you need, buddy. <laughs> we we like to get on each other. Uh, it's all almost like a competition. Uh, you know who can bust the other guy's balls the hardest, which is pretty funny. So when I went out to film these guys, there wasn't any chance in the world that I wasn't going to get a couple lines in. And uh, yes, I'm scrambling to get the food. I'm grabbing this camera, that battery. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. But I got a couple lines in the water, and I got a couple of nice uh, fish. This is not uh, pretty tight, so be careful. Got him. Oh, good one. Good pike. Good go. pike. <laughs> well, first thing is we always use draw spreaders. Okay. That keeps you safe and keeps the fish in good shape. So that pretty much spreads out the draws. Just down there. He swallows it. He's a little body. And just kind of turn it. Twist it, yeah. So get down to the little... There we go. So I do it as gently as I can. There yeah. we go. This is a very small baby pike. You want to make sure we release her nice and soon. You want to take your fish? You want to hold that for one second? No, I don't want to hurt her. Yeah. All right. About 15 inches. No, I wanted to see if she'll live. She's going to live. She's going to do great. The toughest part is with these is when their eyes freeze. So getting them back in the water. Yeah, there he goes. Perfect. I just, hey, I just want to yeah. see him come out with his little bag of your bait to rebait. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a sandwich bag with bait in it. Yeah, well, listen, gold I, I would have asked you for me? bait, but I know you wouldn't have given me any. You know that's not true. You mean this, Roger? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Hi, hi, my name is Josh Light. I'm going ice fishing today. I thought you were joking. Are you want? No, this is what it got out of the truck. There's bed. ice in it. Isn't that There's beautiful? ice cubes in Go it. Go fishing. I'll give you some bait. Open up that bag. I'm going to get you some bait. No. 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 No, 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 no. That's not good bait. That's no, good we bait. want him catching pickerel. We get want them out of here. I'm going to get you some bait. But Roger was quite paranoid that I was going to catch the biggest fish and make them look really bad. Yeah, Realize wait here, what Mike's, you just did, though. Wait here, Mike's going to bring you some bait. Oh, We're you want to drop it into the bag? Yeah, put it in your bag. And hey, you got any water, Mike? You put it on the next time you listen, pull that trap up. Listen, you, the, here's the problem. He's going to win. He's not going to win. I'm telling you. He's not going to win. He's, that, he's got that kind of luck. He's I'm fishing with number two hooks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Give me the line. <laughs> what do you got? Ten feet on that? 
Excuse me, can I at least place no. it in the water you know by yourself? You're, you're putting it down too far. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you did that. No, you're putting that was it. All your fault. Look, you got it way too far down. That's not how far you down you have it. You only want it a foot the below the ice. The flag was up. He bit it and took it for a little ways. I know, but you just let it sink. I want you to catch the fish. Roger will be so mad. I already caught a fish. No, you didn't. Catch I caught a northern. I did too. A little baby. Thing. Whatever. Those don't count. And what do you think the likelihood of pulling in something good with that's going to be? Uh, well. <laughs> I can tell you what's going to happen. What's going to happen is he's going to get a big northern. Take that bait. He's only got 50 feet of line on there. They take 300 and 400 feet. Of, we put 400 feet of line on our spools. It's going to hit the end and that's the end of it. <laughs> it's going to be dumb. <laughs> While Roger and the boys have some fun at Josh's expense, further along down the ice, things are a bit more serious, as Colby experiences a personal best. Nice! Yeah! Here you go. Yeah, baby. My personal best. When I did get it, not only was it a long fish, but it was really fat too, so that really added to the size, weight, and the excitement of the fight. All right, there you go. Almost high one up, this is it. 42 is coming up. See what you guys can get. Let's measure this. Oh, when you get that big fish on the end of your line, nothing like it. You just, and, and it it doesn't even come down to the trophy or the money or, or anything like that. It's bragging rights, that's all it is. And when you see that giant head go past that hole and you don't know how you're gonna turn that fish's head up a 10 inch hole, it's, it's just amazing. You, you just have to experience it to know it. it. It looks like this big dinosaur just swam by your hole. and They always look bigger in the water than when you pull them out, but when you see that northern pike go by the bottom of that hole, all you can think about is how the hell am I gonna get this up that hole? It is a huge adrenaline rush and uh, all you want to do is get everybody to come see your fish. You want them to see it and you know sometimes if it's really cold you've got to get that fish right back in the water but we all have cameras with us. We take pictures and get it, get it back in so it survives and uh, those pictures are as good as seeing the fish itself. If you keep them in the water it keeps them from freezing the fish and then they'll, they'll survive when we release them. So we keep them. This one's hooked good so we just put them back in the water until we're ready to Unhook him, grab a picture, and we're done. Look at this, Rob. Okay, hold this Look at this my, fish. Get my camera. Look at this, Rob. <laughs> Whoa, nice fish. That's awesome. See, ice fishermen are like a NASCAR pit crew, right? 20 guys show up to the hole and all. <laughs> All kinds of tools and let me grab the leader, the job done. So what I'm doing here, instead of going into the mouth of the fish, I'm gonna come through his gill plate, grab that hook inside, and I'm gonna roll the hook. Nice, nice. Now that it's right out. Hold it up. Take a picture. Fat northern. I try to uh, stay calm, 
but it's very difficult to do when, when you know, you, you first feel that tension and then he takes off and that line screaming through your fingers, you know you have a good fish on and the, and the adrenaline is just great, you know, I mean, you try to, oh, where's my, uh, where's my pliers, where's this, when I get this in, I'm going to have to, you know, get this thing through the hole, where's the gaff, you know, and you, it's just, ah, it's great, you know. The excitement of ice fishing is very different from any other fishing that I do, and um, uh, it's you don't typically see big fish coming through the ice. I mean, uh, when 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 you talk about big fish or uh, you know trophy fish like you know 30, 36, 40 inch northern pike, uh, I can't tell you how exhilarating it is to see a mouth this big coming through a 10 inch hole um with mouth wide open big teeth in it that's just like holy crap look at this thing you know look at this thing coming out of the ice are you kidding me you get this little 10 inch hole you're looking down your flag goes up now it all starts with what do you got on your line the fight uh the aggression um it's stressful because it's you know, they, they grab the fish by the head um, and, and uh, they'll stop and flip it and swallow it head first and you just gotta know how and what they do where you kinda like read them. Tail kick. Down the hole. <laughs> this is a great story. Um, uh, Colby was kind of, um, the sunset was happening. So we're more kind of, wow, you know, checking out the sunset going, this is awesome. You know, and uh, Colby pulls out his camera and he starts filming the sunset. And he's like, oh my God. And then, you know, I got a fish there, but I don't know how big it is. I'm pulling it in. and kind of it's feeling heavy and I'm like it's like I don't know I think I got weeds I'm not sure but it's kind of like pulling I was like definitely a fish and he's you know he's focused on the sunset you know he's like looking at the sunset oh wow check this out and I'm like I'm like all of a sudden it's like getting stuck at the bottom of the hole so I'm kind of releasing it and kind of and then finally it starts coming and I see the water starting to boil up out of the hole out of the hole and and I had no idea I was gonna what, what I was looking at. So basically I come up and I see the head. I kind of get down and I look, I pull the, you know, I pull the fish up from the hole and it just keeps on coming. Oh and I just, God. holy crap, you know, this fish is huge. <laughs> holy <laughs> Holy <laughs> Indian Hill Ice Trap. Pike Fest 2015. Oh, Hard the swears. Kevin, Kevin, check the hook. Check the hook. Get it back in the. Get it back in the hole. I'll go get the um. Get the measuring tape. Oh no. So uh, um, it was great. I mean, I had a great time. While fishing may appear to be the focal point of the trip, an important part of the ice fishing experience lay in the spirit of good food and company. When we come up here, the people are first, the food is second, the fishing is just a bonus. It's all about the people and the food. It's awesome. 
fishing's kind of like second almost sometimes, you know? Just kind of getting together to have some fun, you know, and uh, eat some food and good friends, food and fun, you know? I just love being outside in nature. And, you, and especially with fishing, you just, uh, uh, you know, being outdoors, you just never know what's coming up through the hole. That flag goes up, just the excitement that you feel, the adrenaline rush. Um, you know, it could be a blank, it could be a 15 pound fish, you just never know. Nice fish! I got another trap, that's what's going on. Roger's over there and Mike's over there, everyone's over there. And you know, I, I go and I, I get that fish, I get the fish to the hole and it's it's a giant fish. It's a 38, 39 inch fish and I had two other flags up and all of my lines were wrapped around that fish. Does it look good? Yeah, let's dip it. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, let's dip it good. back in the water. Till we can no, you got, no, you got him right here, dude. Yeah, I know. I want to get him back before okay. I... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Take him. It's your fish. Him, let me just put him in the water so I can get my stuff together. That's a fat female right there. Nice. It is. Beautiful. <laughs> nice fish, dude. That's awesome, man. Last you got another fish on here. Yeah, there is. There's another fish. <laughs> so Roger went over to that, that other flag and started pulling the line just to try to help me straighten it out. But at that point, Roger hadn't caught any fish. So as far as I was concerned, whatever was on the end of that line was Roger's fish. And he ended up catching a pretty good fish. I think it was 37 inches. Great. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh my god. Wow! And I got another line! I've got another line caught to it. Oh. That crop over there is caught on it. So see if you can get a third one. Hurry up! <laughs> That's another pig! I know. Look at this mess. Several lines wrapped around that fish, so now there's another line. I'm not gonna try to figure that out. So somebody else takes that fish through the same hole. The second fish comes through the same hole and you know, 30 yards off to, to the left, there's another flag and we're, all we were trying to do was straighten out the line. <laughs> Two out of the same hole. That is remarkable. <laughs> nice. That is remarkable. Nice. Get Sorry, I didn't fish. mean to pull your line, your second fish in, Kurt. That's like a fisherman's no-no. That's like an assist. <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of people think we're crazy to go up and spend a few days on the ice in the, in the frigid temperatures and, you know, just running around like that all day long. But, um, you know, if you enjoy, you really have a passion for ice fishing, then that, that is a, a, about as great a ice fishing vacation as you can imagine. <laughs> Camp life was, was uh, pretty interesting, not exactly as I anticipated. Um, because it was so cold and you spend so much time tending to your gear, um, you know, you spend most of your time out and about by yourself, checking gear, you know, casually chit-chatting with the guys along the way. I thought there'd be more, uh, you know, time spent in the camp, um, but that didn't bother me at all. Uh, it's just, you know, 15 traps frozen in the ice, um, you know, and especially in a place like Missisquoi Bay where there's such a, a large amount of fish around, you know, there's flags flying most of the day so um, you know so for me it, I, it was a little bit different than I expected but at the same time when the flags are popping you got no complaints life in the camp uh, it's a lot of fun it's very laid back very relaxing everybody helps everybody else we share food we share everything so it's really it's really a great experience it's uh, it's kind of like, it's exactly like camping in the woods. Go to a campsite, you meet people, you talk to people. These are just people that we meet there every year. All it is is a campsite, we just happen to be on the ice. You gotta be a diehard to do it. Um, you're not taking showers, you don't have a toilet, you don't have running water. Uh, you gotta improvise on a lot of things, um, make the best of it. Uh, well, we've been doing this for so long, we have a pretty good system up there. And um, it's fun though, it's, it's, 
just the cooking and the whole experience out there on the ice and sleeping on the ice and listening to the groans at night of the ice cracking underneath you as you're sleeping and waking you up and it, you know it can sound like thunder sometimes uh, it's a whole new experience it's a it's a lot of fun but uh, like, like I said you, you got to be a diehard to do it especially for a good week period you know there's no showers there's no running water we have a trailer with a heater in it with a uh, outhouse toilet in it um, it's pretty crude. I mean, it's it's rough in it. The best part about fishing is getting out, hanging out with the guys, getting away from everything. No phones, no TV, no nothing. You're just out there and nothing matters. You're just having fun and enjoying the company. For me, the fun of fishing is being with the guys, right? You know, the camaraderie, um, you know, the storytelling, you know, kind of letting loose, you know, joking around, um, all in the great, you know, backdrop of nature. And that's what I catch when I go fishing. A lot of peace of mind. A wiggle out of the water, that's a bonus for me. That's, 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 uh, I could sit here and answer that all, all day. Um, basically, I love to fish. It, brings me back to good times with my grandfather, with my father, um, my nephews. I also know that um, every potential fishing trip could be a great memory. I love the pursuit. I love fishing. Uh, I just, whew, that's, that's a good question. You know, everyone, in, my father, my uncles, my grandfathers, everyone was an outdoorsman. Um, they were bigger fishermen than hunters. So I think I gravitate more towards fishing, but that's how I grew up, you know. Um, my dad owned his own business. He could take some time off here and there. I mean, every, you know, most of my uh, fondest memories of being a kid is when I was fishing with my dad and my cousins and grandfathers. So it's, it's just a way of life. Um, I don't know if there's any way to explain what draws you, draws me to it other than the fact that it's just something I've always enjoyed since I was, you know, a little kid. Teaching fishing, seeing more people um, get that big fish that I may have put them on, or watching my seven-year-old um, get his first big pike a couple years ago, that was, out of everything I've ever done fishing, that was my greatest moment. They don't mind that color line? They don't see it? Actually, this line, it's a whole, it's a whole other story as far as that, but this line is, um, represents my son that passed away, my young boy. My son, Talon, he, um, he passed away a few years ago. My dream always was to have a, a child, and we had the opportunity, we had to do in vitro, uh, we had some issues. And we finally had it happen, and we didn't know anything was wrong until the time he was born. And weeks after, we spent a lot of time in uh, Boston Children's Hospital, and where they finally diagnosed him. We lived our life with our son. Us to us, it was normal, and we did everything with him we possibly could. We had a lot of love from family and friends. Um, me now, I push more and more as I can um, for the outdoors. It's my way to talk to my boy and be close to him um, and uh, he gives me a strength that the things that he couldn't do uh, smile back and giggle and all that things that he wasn't supposed to do he did tell him strong even though uh, his sickness helped you know held him back and wouldn't think that but he was really really strong and he was here for a reason and I was blessed to have him for 21 months On the final night after the fishing's done, the tallying begins. Awards are given, achievements acknowledged, and bragging rights earned. Carl, you got a 12 inch fish? Um, what day? Let me get my book. Who else you waiting for? You? So you're 36? Uh, so we're not going by weight for the time. Yeah. Right. We never hit water. We, we chipped.
<laughs> hey, gentlemen, between two walls coming up. This is unbelievable. You guys are here because you're the most hardest fishermen I've ever met in my life. The only reason. Nobody else could handle this. Give yourself a round of applause, you guys. Kick ass. Hey, 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 hey. So, for as far as the pike go, first, second, and third, Kevin, you've got first place with a 38. Yeah. Nice How much? So that gives you one, two, three, four, five, 120 bucks cash. Nice. <laughs> and this is a fantastic trophy. Nice yeah. job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job. So the second place pike goes to yeah yeah baby yeah baby so that's uh I think this is hey, fixed hey I bet I bet the next time you're gonna take your time measuring it yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that second place trophy and sixty dollars cash and third place goes to yeah, yeah. yeah I think this is fixed now it's fixed. so largest perch today. Uh, or this week goes to Chad. He got a nine inch, nice, nine inch perch. All no right. money. Rose and trophy. China, baby. Rosen, <laughs> nice. Rosen doing it. Good job, buddy. Way to go, bro. And then the category of most pike caught goes to Carl with 38. That is yeah. the lowest oh, nice. we've ever had. Lowest, yeah. yeah. There you go. That's the last number. Awesome. Yeah. And then, last but not least, we have the trophy for the smallest pipe caught this week. And that also goes to Carl. Yeah, this is for the most fish. Come on, do it. Apparently, this is the for the smallest pipe. Which one do you have more pride in winning? <laughs> <laughs>
That's what it's all about, baby.